right, you want to lose uh, 30 pounds in 90 days. Yeah, I bet. Who doesn't? You uh, want to do it, and you want it to be extremely easy. Of course. I can do this. I can make this happen. I can even show you, but uh, the reality is you know you, and I have a feeling I know you too. But anyway, welcome to Walk Talk Vent. Let's do this. Hi guys, welcome back. We're going to take a little break from Chronically Stephanie and today we're going to visit Mel in real life. I've had a chance to watch about half a dozen of Mel's um, videos over the past three or four months. They're pretty interesting as well. She has some interesting stuff happening with her that we ended up kind of touching with Chronically Stephanie, um, but she doesn't really talk about her life too, too much here. But I want you to listen to this particular gripe she has about the weight loss surgery results that she is kind of stuck with. So I'm going to be quiet and let's listen to Mel. I want to talk about what they don't tell you after gastric bypass surgery, specifically the rue and why. And they probably didn't tell you because they didn't know. And what happened was I had my gastric bypass surgery October 2004 and I lost quite a bit of weight. Everything was going great. I was really bad about taking my vitamins, though. And I started to get these little brown marks on my canines on the very top right here. And <clears throat> um, I, I actually gone to a dentist because I got a chip on my little tooth right there. And the dentist um, said she didn't know what was going on. Went through my dental history, and I've always had beautiful, strong, great teeth. I remember my dentist telling me my enamel was so strong. Thanks. And um, she said it could be maybe from your vitamins, just take them and the chip was fine. And then I remember I got a little crack on a molar here and then a really bad crack up here. And I went to the dentist and again, the dentist didn't know it was here, maybe vitamin deficiency, but said I needed a root canal. Um, I had a really bad cavity that just popped or cracked or whatever <clears throat> and couldn't afford that because um, we just didn't have the money and you when you don't have the money you let things go that at the time don't seem as important as paying rent or groceries or needs for your kids and uh, then about six years ago my cousin noticed a little black spot on my tooth thought it was a piece of pepper and that was the first time I noticed that when she pointed it out to me and then I kid you not within probably five months all my teeth just went started cracking breaking black um and it happened really fast I thought and I had been diagnosed with a severe malnutrition I think it was called hypo or hyperthyroidism secondary non-renal I was so bad that my doctor said if I didn't get my vitamin levels back up um that I would have to have a transfusion or like a dialysis where they take my blood out, clean it, and then put it back in. Then I, <clears throat> I, then I thought it was because of malnutrition and I started corresponding with my, um, with, uh, not my dentist, with a dentist down in Los Angeles. I live in the Central Valley in California and his name is Dr. Dorfman. He's a celebrity dentist like for Ozzy Osbourne. The reason I picked him is because I had seen him on the doctors doing dental makeovers and stuff. And after researching him, I noticed he went to the dental school named after my childhood orthodontist who was like, like an uncle to me because I'd broken my jaw when I was five and I had braces when I was six, and he took care of me from ages six to 14. He used to be so kind and sweet and loving to me, and I just remembered how much I loved Dr. Dagoni. So I think, if I remember correctly, Dr. Dorfman studied under Dr. Dagoni too, or mentored or something, and uh, they, they knew each other. So I messaged him, and I said, hey, you know, this is who I am. This is who my orthodontist was I think that's so cool that you you know you know him and blah 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 can you take a look at my x-rays and he his office messaged back and said we don't think this is malnutrition this is something more you see in babies like infants and um, elderly people but not people my age and I was in my mid-40s at this time 
And uh, they said, no, this is as gastric acid reflux. What happened, if it's not from vomiting while you slept, you would have um, acid, like gastric juices coming through your esophagus, through your pouch to your esophagus. And then that made sense to me because I had a perforated ulcer. I'd have emergency surgery and almost killed me. I was septic. I was literally a day from death. And after that, I had to constantly take um, either like Pepsid or, or Zantac. Now, now I don't take Zantac, but, um, and that was prescribed by the doctor. And I always have had really bad heartburn before that. And when I had the gastric bypass, that was one of the things they said, oh, no, you won't get heartburn anymore because your stomach will be detached. And I didn't for a long time. And it's like, wow, gosh, everything made sense. So um, I also found out, too, that it is malnutrition, not malnutrition, but like vitamin. Yeah, I guess it could be considered malnutrition. It's the combination of both, but mostly it's the, the gastric acid reflux. And I don't think they do the Rue and Y anymore. They, they've they um, evolved, and they do better um, gastric bypass surgeries. But um, had I known all the complications, I would never have done it. It was the biggest mistake of my life as far as I'm concerned because I've had so many health issues. Right now, I just did my blood work a couple weeks ago, and I'm severely anemic to where I need an iron uh, a transfusion and that that scares me to death okay so obviously mel's going through a hard time with her teeth but also her health and sometimes with teeth when you hit your 30s 40s or 50s sometimes your genetics do kick in and you have a bad situation but let's say the dentists were correct and this was from her bariatric surgery and it was this acid reflux coming up obviously there's starting to be a little trend here because not only is she having the tooth situation, but also chronically Stephanie was going through that as well. And I'm hoping to show you a couple more situations where people were going through that too, just to show you that it is legitimately something that more people should be talking about, yet I hardly hear anything about it unless you take a deep dive. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read you one of the comments that they left for Mel here on her video. And I want you guys to ponder it while you're walking, obviously. This is from Kevin Moore, 9716, and it was left about two years ago or so. It says, Mel, I know and understand what you're going through. I had a gastric sleeve in 2018. No one told me or warned me about this issue. My teeth are all decayed, breaking, hurting, and needing to all come out. I have horrible acid reflux. I'm not supposed to be able to throw up, but I do. I do not smile, I avoid people I know, and just like you, I hide my mouth if I have to talk to someone. I am prepaying a periodontist to have implants. So with that being said, I want you guys to grab your shoes. Let's go for a walk. Sometimes I think, is today the day these guys wise up and vanish? But you guys keep telling me you're in it for the long haul. You guys don't want a doctor or a physical trainer. You want this guy. So much for imposter syndrome. So let's go over the rules. We walk daily because we choose to. We drink water because we want to. And we avoid sugar because it's just the way we are. Watch us lose 30 pounds in 90 days together. I can do this, you can do this, we can do this, let's do this. So uh, let's do a shoe check. Because I know that all of us walk in shoes, I assume some of us might have slippers or sandals on, but I'd imagine all of us are in shoes. I'm wearing Reeboks today. They are comfy as all heck. And uh, one of the things I would recommend is that you have more than one pair of shoes. And the reason I say that is if you want one pair and you're the type that likes to look at the bottom of the treading and see how 
you're grinding it down to nothing, that's kind of a cool way to kind of gauge how far you've walked, right? But if you get multiple shoes and you switch them off, then they don't get uh, too gnarly or gross, you know? And uh, whatever shoe you are wearing, if you would, mention it in the comments. I, uh, one, once upon a time, not too many years ago, I had a pair of black kind of mesh shoes that I bought from Walmart for like 10 bucks. And they lasted me like a year and they were the most comfortable shoes uh, kind of like a foam sole. They were very, very comfy. If you uh, have comfy shoes and they really help you during your walk, maybe you can share the brand in the comments. I'd be interested to hear about that. I uh, don't know if you guys saw, I'm sure you guys did, the boat in Baltimore, Maryland that took down the bridge. That was one of the scariest things I've ever seen. And I thought, the great white shark being taken out by the 60-year-old grandmother orca named Sophia. I thought that was the scariest thing. And then the very next day or two, I was able to catch that. I thought that was something else. Apparently, some people are lost their lives because of that. Really unfortunate, you know? But um, it reminded me of that movie with Julia Roberts, uh, the movie that supposedly the Obamas wrote, where one of the scenes they show like this giant ship and it kind of just kind of glides right into the beach and it just looked freaky and powerful. And I couldn't help but think when that bridge went down in Baltimore, it literally looked like a house of cards or toothpicks. That was scary. Could you imagine being on that bridge at 1.30? which goes back to what our parents told us, there's nothing good going on at that hour of the, of the evening, <laughs> right? Sometimes it's cool to be in your 40s and 50s. By 10 o'clock, you're kind of tired and ready to go to bed and call it a night, you know? Sometimes it's, uh, sometimes it's good to be at home. But the reality is, you know, how can you warn somebody for that? You know, hey, Bill, drive safe. Yeah, I will. And Bill, when you get to that bridge, Make sure you keep an eye on those boats. I mean, there's just nothing you could do to save yourself in that situation. That is truly fate, you know? I don't know if you guys have been following this, but you know, if you're in the age group that a lot of my listeners are, which is that 40 to 55 window, people uh, think that we're grandparent-ish, which I suppose they're, they're right, but we were young not too long ago. And you guys remember in the 90s when Puff Daddy became popular, right? Every time I think of that guy, I still think of this young, hip, really cool guy that's like forever in his 20s, but apparently he's in his 50s and he's really pervy now and, you know, goes by the name Diddy. And I guess he did, didn't he? <laughs> he diddy all those bad things, yes. That is crazy. And then you hear this stuff about the, the kids on Nickelodeon that apparently they uh, were going through hell as well. And it just kind of reminds you, you know, you're put on this planet to be you and to kind of do you and, and, and follow your own storyline. You're not meant to be these people, right? You're supposed to be, you're supposed to be observing these people, so to speak, right? They're your form of entertainment. But there's a lot of people, especially when we were young, where we would say, God, I wish I had that guy's life, right? Or God, I wish I had that lifestyle. Guys, be, be, be happy where you're at because some of those lifestyles are secretly nightmares. And, um, you know, if you have to do compromising things to become rich, famous, and successful, there is something evil about that, you know? So. If that's what it takes to make it big in Hollywood, to compromise yourself, your morals, your soul, then heck, let's just go for a walk and be happy with who we are, you know? But I thought that was crazy. Do you guys still see Puff Daddy as forever a young guy, you know, that we all saw in the 90s and early 2000s? Or, you know, do you see him for what he is, this middle age? guy that's really got a, a nasty reputation and uh, apparently he's just uh, 
not the best of human being, you know? That goes back to uh, what I was talking about the other day is, you know, we all have choices to do the right thing or the wrong thing. And I think right now, the balance in this country at least is too many of us are doing the wrong thing. And I hope you're not. I hope you're trying to, to, do, to do good. If you are in my age group, you probably do have kids. They're probably getting into the adult ages and you probably are starting to have grandkids. I don't know about you, but my goal is I want to be a really good grandpa to my granddaughter because my grandma was such a good grandma to me. If you are a grandma or grandpa and you could share that in the comments, that would be nice to know. I think one of the best things you can do for your grandchildren is to try to stay healthy, right? So if you walk and then when they visit you, you could take them for a walk and they'll be like, Grandma, this sucks. And you could be like, I know, but one of these days you'll appreciate it, Susie. You know, can we go home and have root beer and ice cream? And you can say, yes, let's go get some root beer and ice cream. By the way, when was the last time you had a float? God, you remember they used to do commercials. A&W would like show this frosty mug with ice or with, ice, with vanilla ice cream and then they'd pour in the root beer and it would just look perfect. But I have a question, maybe you guys can help me with this. Every single time I make a float, these bubbles form. So it never looks like the, the A&W float, you know? It never looks like that. And I remember when I was younger, and I, I think all of these brands still exist, but there was like, I don't know, I felt like there was like half a dozen root beer brands. There was A&W, there was Hires, there was Barks. I always thought Barks was pretty cool. It was like a silver can. Do you guys remember Barks? Looked like Coors Light. Barks root beer has more bite than Coors Light. <laughs> That's why we all drink Coors Light. It's easy, you know, easy to handle. I uh, prefer Corona myself. Do you guys like to sit around the pool and sip on a Corona? the little lime that's always nice are you guys uh, is anyone here afraid of flying the last time I was on a flight from Las Vegas to Phoenix thank God it was just a 45 minute flight right but for the last like 15 minutes I had like a panic attack on the airplane oh my god what a nightmare what a nightmare there's a lot of talk online that's the one thing that's kind of a bummer about online. There's a lot of dis divisive talk. One of the divisive things that I heard is that I guess there's a lot of folks that, you know, they wanna have more female pilots on the planes, right? And I feel like I can talk to you guys because three fourths of my audience is female. I wanna have the best pilot on there, you know? But there's gonna come moments in your life where you're at work or you're at home with somebody you love and you care about and they're going to be on the wrong side of the argument you know they're going to start saying stuff and they're going to say it in a way that doesn't come across as smooth or decent or open-minded and so sometimes you have to ask yourself do you want to be right or do you want to be happy you know do you have to win every argument is telling your wife that we need females out of the cockpit of an airplane, is that really going to solve any problems that you think you're having, you know? Is telling your significant other that we need more people, you know, with long hair and, you know, a certain look to be in the cockpit? No, it's not, you know? My thinking is everybody's different for a reason. We all have different thoughts. It would be great if we could all argue folks into thinking the way we do, but it's just not gonna happen. You and I both know that. So whenever you're thinking about having an argument over things like that, just ask yourself, you know, do I wanna be happy or do I wanna be right? And I think if you at least some of the time choose happy, you'll end up being happier, you know? Cause some people argue with the intent that, you know, I'm gonna win this argument. And uh, 
usually when that happens, there's, there's no winners whatsoever, you know? With that being said, if I go to a surgeon, I'm always gonna check their rating, and I would recommend you guys do that too. Check this out. I was going to my regular doctor, and my, reg my regular doctor said, uh, I think this is a cyst around my tailbone that I need to get removed. And uh, otherwise it's just gonna stay there forever and you can't take antibiotics forever, right? So I say, well, do you have anyone in particular that you can recommend, right? And he goes, yeah, I'll get you the name of a good surgeon and I'll be uh, back to give you instructions for you know the next coming weeks and stuff. And so he comes in and he leaves me the name of a surgeon. I go and meet the surgeon, go as far as to schedule a surgery with that surgeon. And then something just told me this guy was real quick with me. He didn't really listen to what I had to say, yada, yada. And for whatever reason, I just thought, I'm gonna go check this guy's credentials. I'm gonna go see his reviews. I look at his reviews and his reviews are extremely vague, his five-star reviews. They're like, hey, Dr. So-and-so really changed my life for the better. Dr. So-and-so fixed something on me that was really challenging and I'm just so glad that I met him. Thank you, Dr. So-and-so, right? Really vague. Meanwhile, the zero, or not zero, but the one star were all, I wish I could vote zero on this guy. He, his bedside manner is horrible. He doesn't return calls. I have questions for him because I have these pains that are occurring, nothing. And it wasn't one one-star review. It was enough where it pulled his average down to like the twos. And keep in mind, his five-star reviews were all very fake looking, right? And I went back to my doctor and I said, doctor, you sent me to this surgeon and uh, I, I looked him up after I met with him and he has really horrible reviews. Is there any way that you could send my referral over to my first surgeon that did my hernia surgery in Chandler? Because my hernia surgery, that was one of those bad boys I wanted to make sure I had the best. So even though I live close to Glendale, I was willing to drive out, you know, to Chandler for this guy because he had 55 five-star reviews and his reviews that were four stars were like, yeah, the nurse so-and-so didn't call me right back, you know, little gripes like that. But when it came to the surgeon himself, it was like, this guy is five stars, this guy is stellar. And I totally agree, just a great, great surgeon. What I don't, what I didn't realize is why didn't I think to call my surgeon first rather than going through all this rigmarole. It's because I thought people were looking out for me and they would send me to somebody that was the best, right? But the reality was totally different. And I told my doctor, I go, why did you send me to this guy? He's got horrible reviews. And his answer was so lame. He said something to the effect of, I moved from Chandler. I'm not really aware of too many surgeons around here. So our, our company just has a connection with his with his services and I'm thinking to myself that is a horrible reason to refer people you know and if any of you at home have any nightmare little stories like that please share you know but anyway make a long story short I ended up using my surgeon that did my first surgery and I'm so glad I did so if I ever have another surgery or a friend that's close to me or a family member has to get a surgery I'm going to at least have them consider my surgeon, you know? I think that's something that's so important. There are some people that really don't have your best interest at heart. And I'm not saying that doctors don't because I usually have great relationships with my doctor. And I'm just gonna kind of, I'm gonna kind of use this as a red flag against my doctor because I, I haven't changed from him, but I don't know, maybe I should. Maybe you guys could leave me a comment and. Maybe those are the type of doctors that you should ditch out on. He's also the type of doctor that when I do reach out to leave a message, a nurse or nobody never calls back, ever. God, do you have doctors like that? It's like, God, I'd really like an answer within 24 hours. 
you know? And every time you call, every doctor has the token, if this is an emergency, hang up and dial 911. Well, my goodness, it's just a minor emergency. Get on the phone with me, you know? So this one is really out there, but I think some of you have heard about it. I uh, understand that April 8th, there's gonna be an eclipse. And I guess it's one of these eclipses where there's a, a zone in the middle of America where everyone's gonna see this eclipse and it's gonna be a complete eclipse where I guess it literally turns dark for a couple minutes or a couple seconds, right? And uh, apparently, according to the videos that I've seen, apparently they're gonna call out the National Guard because I don't know if people think it's the end of the world or there's gonna be a solar flare to take out everything or if there's gonna be an attack or, or what. But I know what's gonna happen that day and so do you deep down. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing is gonna go down that day. It's just gonna be like it always is. All right, knock on wood just to be safe, but you know, it really is gonna be that way. If you're new and this is the first time you're listening, I'm glad you're here. We basically try to walk every day. I uh, am walking every day and I'm kind of showing folks that this is how I do a 30 pound weight loss in about a 90 day period. And I've asked for people to join me. So while they're walking at home and you're walking at home, I'm walking here and we can do it together. In addition to walking, we try to avoid sugar, but we're human beings. Every now and then you eat sugar, but we try to avoid it. And we also try to uh, switch out all the sweet drinks that we drink throughout the day for water. So we're going a slow process. We believe we're gonna lose quite a bit in about a 90 day period, but I think we've uh, mostly resolved that this is something we're gonna try to do for longer than 90 days. So. If you want to uh, stay with us and subscribe and stuff, you are welcome and we're glad you're here. If you've been here with me for a long time, I want to let you know that I think we've got the perfect little experimentation pod or group, whatever you want to call us. Because if you think about it, I bet out of my subscribers, I have a little bit over 100 now, I bet you there's only 15 or 20 of us that are really hardcore and dedicated, right? Now, if there's more, wonderful. But 15 or 20 is enough where over the next 90 days, we can really track and see if this plan works, okay? Because I can tell you it works till you're blue in the face, till I'm blue in the face. Hopefully not till you're blue in the face, but you know what I mean. If, if I tell you this every day that it works and then you live it for 90 days and it does anything but works, you know, put those thoughts in the comments. I, uh, I don't mind people telling me that I tried your plan and it, it doesn't work. I have to do something, you know, tougher. I have to do something where I'm, you know, running rather than walking. You know, I've heard those things before. They don't hurt my feelings by any means. My thinking is if you can do that and you're 28 years old, great, more power to you. But you know, if you're 55 or 60, you know, that's a great plan. But if you do get injured, you know, we're going to be here for you because we know that if you go too hard at those ages, you are eventually going to get injured. And uh, although there's a lot of people that look like Arnold Schwarzenegger in their 20s and 30s, they don't really look like him now or they don't. <laughs> He doesn't really look like himself anymore, if you know what I mean. If you've taken a look at Arnold Schwarzenegger, when you have an overabundance of muscle, it can end up turning into an overabundance of fat. So at least that's how it looks, you know? If you're uh, new here and you're contemplating weight loss surgery or you're contemplating taking Ozempic or Wagovi or some sort, sort of other injectable to lose weight, I would ask you to maybe try this with us for a couple of weeks, maybe try it with us for a couple of months. Not that your surgery isn't going to be successful because the odds are that it will, but simply because I think this will be successful for you too. If you're a woman and you weigh over 250 pounds and your doctor feels like you're in real bad shape and you absolutely need weight loss surgery, 
then I guess you absolutely need it. But if you're 250 pounds or less, give me 21 days to see if we can get you into a walking routine with us. I know some people in our comments, there's a guy named Terry. I don't know if it's Terry's a guy or a girl. I think, I think Terry's a guy. But the first couple times I saw your comments, Terry, I thought your name was the Terrify. So, <laughs> so we have guys and girls that are both doing this challenge with us. So again, if you're new, hit the subscribe button. Tell your, uh, tell your sister and brother of two states over that you're going to be walking with me and that if they walk too, we can all walk together. And um, yeah, so I think it's supposed to rain this weekend in Arizona. So what I'm going to try to do is try to take my walk when it's hopefully not raining, which leads me to a thought and question for you guys to ponder. What are you guys going to do when it starts raining, when it starts snowing, when it gets a little warm? We could be reactive and wait till that happens or, God forbid, we could be proactive and kind of plan for it, right? So maybe you guys could go to Goodwill and pick up a secondhand treadmill, right? Stair stepper, something like that. Maybe you guys could actually bust out a little room in your living room and just kind of walk, you know, kind of do the walk in place type thing, you know? Maybe you could go that route. Maybe you could get a gym membership because you've been thinking about it. And when you go in the gym, you can walk on the treadmill. If people are watching this and they think that I'm against working out at the gym, I'm totally not. I think it's a great idea. I just know that it's real easy to work out every single day at the gym. And then before you know it, you've taken a month or two off. And uh, it, it's really kind of challenging. A person left a comment yesterday that said that that exactly described them. They would go gung-ho in a gym, then take a week off. They would go three or four weeks without eating sugars and certain foods. And then they would celebrate that by going on a binge. Guys, that's, uh, that's not unique to you. That's something that each and every one of us have done, including myself. The main thing is, is in the past, we let that binge lead us right into a different pattern of sorts, right? We went from being gung-ho about being healthy. We have that binge and before you know it, we're not going to the gym, we're not drinking water, we're drinking beer and we're drinking soda pop, right? And we're uh, eating candy and cakes and everything else to go with our normal food. So what I'm thinking is, why don't we give ourselves a little promise? Everybody tell yourself the next time that I have a soda, or the next time that I have a piece of cake, I'm just gonna be okay with it, and we're just gonna move on, it's no big deal. We actually tell ourselves, oh my God, I failed. Give me another piece of cake. And I know that sounds goofy, but that is what we do. We say, hey, we failed, we're human. And all I'm saying is, yeah, we failed, we're human, but let's get right back on the horse, right? You wanna enjoy a piece of cake? You want to enjoy it with a nice glass of milk? Fine, no big deal. But how about this? After you enjoy that cake with a nice glass of milk, why don't you take a little walk around the block so you feel like you earned it? So now instead of some devastating thing that broke you off your game, now you can look at it and just say it's part of your game because it's a part of life. You're gonna be uh, encountering a lot of cake. There used to be this restaurant, you guys probably remember it, it was called Kenny Rogers Roasters. And Kenny Rogers Roasters had this like chocolate velvet cake right at the register, very smart. So you're buying your chicken, right? And right as you're uh, about to pay for it, you see this gorgeous looking cake. And I've tasted that cake, it was delicious, right? If you've ever had that from Kenny Rogers Roasters, and I know it hasn't been around for 15 years, but we're all middle aged. You probably remember the place. And you might have a restaurant that you like where you end up breaking down and buying dessert, right? Sometimes you'll be at McDonald's and you'll get a McFlurry, right? 
Wouldn't it be gross if every time you got a McFlurry, they showed you one of those commercials where they open up the ice cream machine and you see all the gross corrosion in it, and then they hand you your McFlurry, you'd be like, no, no thanks. That's the one thing that can totally gross me out. Start showing me gnarly behind the, the scenes stuff. And before you know it, I'm not eating at Taco Bell and I'm not eating at Wendy's, you know? I think that if we could have all those lunches back and instead of the uh, soda and the fries, especially at a place like Wendy's, I don't know if it's still like this, but they used to have it where you could switch out the fry for a baked potato or um, salad or the chili. God, I used to love the chili. And then all of a sudden we hear the story about how the guy found a finger in the chili and God, that ruined me for a, a year. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm uh, a little concerned about you these upcoming days just because these are the days where you can either say, yeah, I really enjoy this routine or you can say, God, it is getting hot out here. Jesse's right. The French onion dip does sound delicious. I think I'm going to spoil myself with an extra large Coke <laughs> or Pepsi. Today is one of my neighbor's Mrs. Overstreet's birthday. I think she's 69 today. And she's walking up here. We're going to say hello to Mrs. Overstreet. I'm going to switch you around here so you can kind of get an idea of what it's like when we move forward in life. Right? I really want to thank all my subscribers and everybody that's been leaving comments. I think it's wonderful. Oh, Mrs. Overstreet's had it with her walk. See, this is why partners ruin your walk. See, Mr. Overstreet, he's like, let's go celebrate your birthday with some cake. Which, by the way, if it is your birthday, go get some cake, you know? Go get some cake. I hope you guys are enjoying walking with me. I really enjoy walking with you guys. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. You, you would be amazed how many people in front of me wave at the camera, not realizing it's, you know, pointed at me, not them. <laughs> I think that's the funniest thing. Oh, another thing. Don't forget what I told you. While it's getting warm outside, if you start getting things like chafing on your legs, don't battle through it. Go get some... Go get some like jock itch or powder spray for athlete's foot and spray it on your, spray it on your inner thighs. Trust me, that way overnight it'll heal up so you can walk the next morning. And if that starts happening, it could be happening because you're taking a walk that's a little too long. So, you know, we wanna protect our feet by having nice shoes, right? Make sure they fit you. Don't wear shoes that are too tight. They really make a walk no fun. If you have a shoe that on the back, it, it races up and gets your Achilles and gets you a blister there, find a different shoe. Those are gonna make walking miserable. Some people are okay with those blisters on the back of their heels and Achilles, and it's like, God, those are the worst. But anyway, believe it or not, there's another half hour done. We'll see you later, keep walking. Okay, guys, you got home from work, you took a little walk before you went home, and now you're hungry, and you need to drive up to this grocery store or to Burger King or someplace to get something to eat, right? What I propose is that you just contemplate, before it gets too, too hot, the idea of extra credit. And if you think that that's kind of cruel, making the family wait till you walk up the store and come back, just remember, we're of the age group where when we were kids, there were commercials begging our parents not to beat the crap out of us. You guys remember those commercials? They were literally, you know, please don't talk to your kid poorly. And then, I don't know if you guys remember, but those commercials would go like an extra... They would go the extra distance. They would literally show like a woman's face going, you worthless, you're not worth anything. Get, <laughs> Get out of my face. God, tell me you guys remember those lovely commercials we grew up with. God. 
And then I remember we also had the Ed McMahon sweepstakes commercials. You guys should Google Ed McMahon or YouTube Ed McMahon Mandela Effect because I think we all remember him selling the publisher's clearinghouse, but apparently he was part of some sweepstakes that was similar, but it was a different one. So in case you're wondering, we might be wrong on that one. Same with the Berenstain Bears. It might be Berenstain. Who knows? The one that gets me is the mirror, mirror on the wall. Apparently it was never that. Apparently it was magic mirror on the wall. Isn't that crazy? Do you guys think in 2012 we, we actually died and jumped onto a, a whole new multiverse? Oh, this is where you guys unsubscribe. I don't really necessarily think that, but... It's always fun when you hear these goofy things, you know? But this is what I want you guys to do. We could literally walk to the store, and by the way, I do. I just don't necessarily film it, but walk up to the store. In my case, it takes about seven minutes, so it's not a huge walk, but if I walk to the store for seven minutes, walk in the store for five minutes, and then walk back, then all of a sudden you find a way to make a 20-minute walk out of it. And if you do that every day, in addition to your walk, not instead of your walk. See, that's the problem with human nature. We do something and then we say, hey, I'm gonna do this instead of my walk. No, it's not the same thing. You don't get much out of a 15 minute walk the way you do a half hour or 45 minute walk. On the other side, there's overdoing it, right? If you try to do a three, five, 10 mile walk every day, you know, you're going to start getting blisters. You're going you're gonna to start irritating people because now you've got to take a four-hour block out of your day to do your walk, you know. But if that fits your, if that fits your lifestyle and that's something you want to do, my thinking is we just have to try to find a way to baby step things up a notch, right? If we want to hit goals. Now, here's the thing. Not everyone is in a walking routine to hit some magical goal. Sometimes it's good just to get outside of your home. So I don't want you to think by any means that you're forced to do push-ups and sit-ups or you're forced to give up sweets or you're forced to do this, that, and the other. If you want to just uh, enjoy the walk with me and look at the background, I notice when I watch the videos, the sky does look really beautiful. Sometimes I catch the clouds in the background. I'm up here up against the street, so I'm going to let you guys go, but I urge you more than you know, do some extra credit and uh, you guys have a wonderful night. We'll talk tomorrow. Oh, you guys didn't get up and go to the store like I did. When are you people going to start listening to me? God bless it. It's such a beautiful evening. It's very, very hot. Oh my God. I'm so scared for the summer. Oh my goodness, in the summer I'm going to have to reward myself with two ice cream floats every day just to be able to make it with you people. Oh my goodness, you think this is easy carrying this camera? Oh.